everyone, my name is Jovan Hall, and this is my very first video on this channel. It's, it's, it's going to be exciting. I am a graduate student at Norfolk State University, where I am going through my electronics engineering program. I already have an optical engineering degree, and today I will be doing a video called Animation versus Physics. I am very curious about what will be happening in this because in optical engineering, you study light, and you basically study the physics behind it, such as how photons and electrons move, and that's what I did for my undergraduate. So <laughs> I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get into this. So far, this is a pretty cool video. I love the fact that they're actually using the right measurements. It was meters, meters over seconds. And when he, when, he re, when he speeds up, the meters over second goes up, the acceleration goes up. I'm wondering how they edited this though. Hmm, it's pretty cool. I haven't seen anything like this before, but let's continue. <laughs> So if you guys don't know what's going on, the formula they just showed was F equals MA. That basically means force equals mass times acceleration. So what this formula describes is a very basic and a very fundamental process in physics, which describes how force works, how mass works, and how acceleration works. That's <laughs> I love these type of videos because it's such a very, it's a very introductory level to how engineering and how physics operates in a very fun way <laughs> but let's continue <laughs> So this video actually covers, a, and I know it's happening pretty fast, but this video covers a lot of very elementary fundamentals in physics. Another thing that they glossed over was displacement. So if you guys don't know, displacement is how much how much an object moves based off of the force applied to it. And this, this can be shown in the formula work equals force times displacement where work is what you would, what you do to it, and then it's the force that you apply to it times the displacement. And that's kind of what they're going over right now, which is pretty cool. Displacement is how far an object will obviously move or is displaced. But anyways, let's get back into this.
so I actually want to touch on that because if you guys didn't notice, <laughs> what just happened was like a slope. And this slope kind of represented kinetic energy forming into potential energy. And he showed the formula, which is I think was one half mass times volume square, I believe. I believe a square. I don't I don't I don't remember. This is like basic level. But what happened was so you saw the large ball of mass roll down the slope and then turn into potential energy. And what the stick character tried to do is also roll down the slope and turn into potential energy. But the problem was that he was not able to get on the other side of the slope or the straight half because he didn't have enough kinetic energy um with him. And the reason why this is important is because or the reason why he couldn't pass the ball in this moment is because the ball had a larger mass than he did. So the reason why this is important, and this is a basic um, fundamental of physics, is because in order to get more potential energy, you also have to kind of have more kinetic energy, which he didn't have in this instance. In order for him to get past the ball on the other side of the potential um, energy slope, I'm going to just call it the potential energy slope, he had to get more force or basically add more weight to his mass it didn't technically add more weight to his mass but fat but remember force equals mass times acceleration so he had to have more force or acceleration um um in, included into his mass so he can get past the ball because using his natural body weight if he doesn't weigh more than the ball or the boulder in this instance he will not be able to pass up the ball on the other side that's a really cool concept man <laughs> this is this is nice <laughs> So he basically torpedoed himself himself further into space using a concept called torque. If you guys don't know, torque is what makes cars move, which is pretty crazy to even understand. So I know this is a basic or it's not even that basic. This is it's, it's kind of basic. But in order to do something like this, you have to have a really large understanding of physics. So torque is what makes cars drive, which is pretty cool. The fact that he was able to shoot himself in, up into space, which isn't really realistic. But anyways, let's continue. So if you guys don't know what's happening here, basically light operates at different wavelengths. And when you when you increase or decrease the wavelength, that's how many or the, the color of the light changes. So basically a red light and a blue light operate at a different wavelength. In this instance, the red light is operating at 606, six, about 600 nanometers. So what was happening when he was shining the light off of the rocket, light can basically change or light operates in two ways and it's through reflection and refraction what what he showed was something called reflection where light basically bounces off of one thing and goes into another thing that's actually how we're able to see ourselves through mirrors 
and all those things. But have you ever noticed if you ever stick your finger in a cup of water, um, if you look through the glass and you try to look at their, your finger, your finger will be in a slightly different place. And that's something called refraction, where basically when your light, when light enters into a different medium, um, the light wavelength speed kind of changes or basically, yeah, it, it, it basically changes, which alters the what, what we're seeing in real time. So that's what happens in refraction. But what just shown here wasn't technically refraction. It was reflection. I just wanted to explain a little more because that's actually what I studied in my undergraduate, the study of photons and light waves and wavelengths. It's pretty cool stuff if you ever want to go into that if you're young or if you did study it if you're a little older. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction and that's kind of what is shown here the rocket is able to fly because of this law it, basically the rocket is being propelled forward um using the gas behind it or the fire behind it shooting it forward and he's basically orbiting around the planet and building up speed and momentum to sh catapult himself even further or the stick figure either e e even further that's pretty cool stuff man i love the way that they're showing this because I kind of wish when I was younger, um, I was shown videos like this. It kind of makes physics more digestible or makes um, STEM more digestible. If you're able to look at certain concepts like this and, and you're able to, you know, grasp it or you're able to have fun with it in a, in a weird sense. <laughs> So basically, 
they kind of use like a magnetic or a magnetic surfaces, magnetic flux to catapult him further through space. And the reason why this is important is because magnetic flux or magnetism is used to conduct and create electricity in a sense. And it's used in practical senses too. So what they did just now where he was going through the different magnetic surfaces is, is slowly getting faster. That's kind of a realistic concept in a, in a weird, weird way. So what's happening here is that it looks like he, I wouldn't even say flew into a black hole because he was pulled into a black hole. If you guys don't know, black holes are basically made out of condensed stars and they're holes where gravity is so strong where not even light can escape from it. So that's why I say he didn't fly. He was pulled into the black hole where he just pulled further and further and further into it. Obviously, a rocket and a human would never survive in a black hole because black holes warp space and time. Their gravitational pull is so aggressive where nothing really exists in it. Because you have to think, humans operate at the speed of light. That's how we interpret our time, which is three times 10 to the eighth milliseconds, I mean, meters per second. That's how we interpret space and time through light. What happens in black hole is that it's stronger, it's kind of stronger than light. Light can't even escape from it. So it warps the human sense of space and time, which is kind of what's happening right now where he tried to grab the apple and the apple was just so far from him. It just was pulled away from him. He's also getting pulled further too. And it's just a never ending cycle. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of this video. Let me know if you like these type of videos. Um, this is my first one. I'm going to do a lot more. It's LFR Jojo and I'll see you guys in the next one.